Yo, what's up, Swag? You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy Keon Laura, aka K L Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, we are back in here with another Matt B. Great reaction. People aren't noticing this about Colorado, man. Look, man, all I ask is that you guys like the video, man, so we can get that video out to the other rhythm. All I ask is that you guys can share the video to Facebook, to TikTok. If you like a clip that you like, all you gotta do is share it. <laughs> Tell your fine daddy that I said. <sighs> Let me know down below in the comments where, um, where I got that from. Let me know down below in the comments where I got that from. <laughs> Let's get into it. You just a flat out hater. If you can't see. People don't look at this Colorado team from that standpoint, though. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you got to change your perspective because there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Okay. A lot of stuff. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the weekend is over. We had some amazing games on Saturday, and we're going to speak on one of those in today's video. It's October 2nd. It's Monday. And y'all know this. I love Mondays because most people, they hate them. They're sluggish. And today is the day where you can get ahead of the rest of the competition because whether you believe this or not, life's like a video game. It's player versus player. If you can dominate on Mondays and just get a little bit ahead, it makes the rest of the week that much easier. I hope all of you have a great start to your week. And to be honest, I'm already looking forward to Saturday. I'm ready. Let's go. We got a lot of big time matchups on Saturday, the one up and coming. But for now, at least, we're going to talk about what happened in that Colorado USC game. For those it's of y'all don't know, on Sundays, we do our recaps. That's a big video on the channel, but we don't even talk about Colorado game on Sunday because it gets its own separate video. What about that? I can't believe I'm saying this, but Colorado is currently that important. They get their own separate recap. It yeah. seems like to me, at least you guys like it that way, and I'm a fan of the people, and I want to get the people what they want. So in this video, yes, we're going to talk about the game, but more importantly, we're going to talk about this Colorado team and program in general. Because I've come to find out a lot of people aren't noticing this one certain thing with this Colorado team. To me, it's fairly obvious, but you also have to understand I've been keeping up with Deion Sanders for the past three to four years. Yeah. I know the tendencies his football teams tend to have, and you can see this one from a thousand miles away if, and I have a big if, you pay attention. That's the key. You got to pay attention because if you don't pay attention, it can just fly over your head. We're going to talk all about that in today's video. I might show you all the video clip of where Deion Sanders, he even addressed this. We ain't doing no intro, none of that. Let's just get straight into it. So on Saturday, USC, they beat Colorado 48-41. And in my live reaction, I stated, I thought it was an overall good game for both yeah. parties. USC, you walked out of there with a win. Your offense is great. Yeah, you could be somewhat disappointed in the defense. I see that part. But yeah. overall, a win is a win. Winning on the road in the Power Five, it's hard to do, so nothing to complain about there. On the flip side of it for Colorado, yeah, you didn't win the game, but I'd be happy if I was a Colorado fan. Lost by seven points to one of the best teams in the country with the best quarterback in the country? Yeah, you'll take that. And the That's reason true. I think Colorado fans should be more than thrilled about this outcome of the game is because you competed. And y'all came game, back. You didn't compete. You just laid over. They punched you in the mouth one time, and you didn't get up. What's that one saying? It's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get they hit. They got and back get up back and they kept fighting. Comparing That's the two what opponents, Colorado against Oregon, they got hit and didn't get back up. Fast forward in time into the most recent week against USC, they got hit in the mouth yet again in the first half, but the difference is, is they got yeah, like back number nine, up. A lot of people Even in the second that. half, the defense, they got some stops. And some people are going to say, oh, well, they didn't stop them a lot, but they still stopped them a few times. They I think did. that's a moral victory, and I know, I know, I know. Even Shadur Sanders said it after the game. What's a moral victory? That's not a real thing. Trust me, I'm in the same boat, always been in that boat my entire life. I don't do moral victories myself. But, however, let's not act like this wasn't a moral victory because it was. Like I stated, though, final score wound up being 48-41. And you also need to throw this in there. If Colorado didn't just gift USC golden opportunities in the first half, Colorado would have had a legit shot of winning this they game. They would have won Shadur this game. Sanders, yeah. he threw that one interception. That was pretty bad. And then they had the block punt. By the way, what in the crap was that punter doing? My conspiracy theory on that is that the punter, he had the USC money line, and he was wanting the punt to get blocked. Yeah. I don't even want to talk about that. And they have made some other mental mistakes in the first half. Just wasn't good. Yeah. Colorado didn't play bad in the first half, but they didn't play as good as they needed to to be in the game. And I say this in a live reaction. Trust me when I say this. USC is already great enough. You don't need to hand them opportunities. And that's what happened in the first half. I believe at halftime wasn't the score 34-14. So when you look on the grand scheme of things, Colorado's defense only gave up 14 points in the second half. Not yeah. bad at all. You'll take that, considering their defense is awful. Make no mistakes about it. Colorado arguably has one of the worst defenses in the country, and USC's isn't too far behind them. 
Yep. We'll get that in just a second, but let's give credit to the winners first. Caleb Williams, whew, that man's special. You don't need me to sit up here and hype him up because you know it's Caleb Williams. We'll leave it at that. 30 for 40, 400 yards, six touchdowns to one bad interception as well. That one surprised me. QBR 93.1. He played a marvelous game, and I wish I could hype it up, but you know how good he is. Is worth throwing in there. USC didn't even have their star wide receiver, Zakarion Branch. Why not? We're talking about quarterbacks. Let's just bring up Shadur's stats. I haven't even seen him. Okay, 30 for 45. That's pretty good. 371 for touchdowns to that one eye. What about the same QBR thing? Of, eh, not as great as 64.5. I thought Shadur did pretty good in this game. I didn't think he played the greatest game I've ever seen him play because that TCU game, that'd be up there for me. But he did good. Did really good, really good. But once again, not shocked because I know how good Shadur Sanders is. Yeah. I was on the Sanders hype train last year at Jackson State when nobody was talking about him. That's one of the things I was right about with this Colorado team. I tried telling people, man, Shadur Sanders is the real deal. And what did everybody say, all the non sayers Matt, how can you say that? He didn't play Power 5 football last year. He played at an HBCU. He played at Jackson State. Yeah. He wasn't playing competition. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. I get it. But here's what I also get as a former athlete myself. Sometimes you don't need to look at the competition. You need to look at the player themselves. Yeah. I remember an argument I brought up a year and a half ago That's about true. Shadur Sanders. Here's the exact argument I would present now today as well. Okay, Patrick Mahomes is dominating the NFL. So you mean to tell me if he went to a local YMCA and didn't play great competition, you'd say, oh, yeah, well, he's not playing great competition. That's why he's doing good. You see, yeah. you see what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. Shadur is not just a good quarterback. He's a great quarterback. And it's funny because I haven't seen any of these haters saying anything bad about him. I just know, though, they're waiting for him to have one bad game, and it's going to happen. Every quarterback has a bad game or two, and they're going to come out, and they're going to throw him to the fire. That will happen, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But all in all for the game, Colorado had a great offensive showing and a very poor defensive showing. It's as simple as that, and vice versa for USC. Offense was great per usual, and your defense was awful. And it's really a shame because I was high on USC heading into this season and heading into this game. I had them ranked as number three in the country in my rankings. I just thought this defense was going to be better this year. And I know USC fans don't want to hear this, but it's a cold hard truth at this point in time if you don't improve. This is the same USC team from last year. It is a carbon copy pace, and you might get argued and say the defense is worse this year. Give all the credit in the world to Colorado because they put up 41 on your head, but come on, man. 41 to Colorado? They didn't even have their best player in Travis Hunter. I'll leave yeah. it at this for USC. If they definitely didn't defense, have him. He would have made a lot of plays on offense. Championship. I don't care if you got Caleb Williams back there or not. If you can't stop people, it is not a recipe yeah, for success. but Travis would have made a lot of plays on offense. At bare minimum, has a slightly above average defense to an outstanding defense. Even that year in 2019 when Joe Burrow's LSU team won the title, yeah, their defense wasn't great. It wasn't some Georgia defense, but it was at bare minimum average. The problem with USC is their defense is just bad. Getting a move on, though, after the game, Deion Sanders in his press conference stated this, quote-unquote, if you can't see what's coming with Colorado football, you lost your mind. You're a yeah. flat-out hater. You yeah. know what I find extremely funny about that? What did I tell you guys last week? Hey, whether Deion Sanders admits it or not, he knows year one, this is a free trial. He's not even taking it. I mean, he's taking it serious, but he understands the bigger picture. He's not going to tell the media, oh, yeah, we're just trying to put pieces together this year, get ready for year two and year three, but deep down he knows that. Because uh -huh. you don't want to give out that type of vibe because then this year's team feels like, oh, it's for a waste. If you can't see what's coming with CU football, you've lost your mind. My W days are back. Shop exclusive offers for my Walgreens members. Man, you just a flat out hater. If you can't see what's going on and what's going to transpire over the next several months, something's wrong with you. And in this statement, you heard him. If you can't yeah. see what's going to happen and transpire over the next few months, you're a hater. I agree, man. I agree. And let's look at the bigger picture here because I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying stuff like, oh, you know, that's just another lousy excuse for not winning the game. Oh, he talks all this talk and they have all this hype, but they're not winning games and blah, 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 blah. Well, here's what I think. Three and two, bro. It's not that bad. This is year one for Coach Brown. Hey, three and two. Yeah, he talks a big game, but he's also Deion Sanders. He's done that ever since he was 15 years old. I don't even think he intends to come off this way. Maybe he does, but he's a natural promoter. He promotes his team and he promotes his brand and it makes all these high school kids want to go there and play. Say what you want, but it looks fun to be a Colorado football player. You can't say that for many other teams out here. And let's also look at it from this standpoint. Not that, okay, Colorado well, lost three to USC, but how about this? How about we say, okay, Colorado only lost by seven points 
to one of the better teams in the country, a top 10 team. I think that's yeah. pretty good because Nebraska's been quote unquote rebuilding for the last. Oregon was just different, but their defense was and like they can't that. can't even win six games. Nebraska can't even compete with teams like USC. And yet, Coach Prime lost by one touchdown to the best quarterback in the country. And let's throw this in there. USC didn't even make a lot of mistakes. Kayla Williams played out of his mind, and they still only won by seven points. Yep. I think that defense trash, though. How terrible this Colorado program was just a year ago. What's impressive about this to me is how quickly he turned this around, and I think a lot of people have forgotten how bad they were just due to the recent success. I think everybody is expecting now Colorado to beat teams like USC and Oregon because they start out the year 3-0. and When in reality, this team shouldn't even be competing in these games. Granted, yeah, you still lost, but here's what people aren't understanding about this Colorado-USC game. These recruits in high school, I talked to a bunch of them, they're now looking at Colorado and going, well, dang. They really are on the come up. They only lost to USC by seven points. Like I uh-huh. stated, Shadur Sanders and Deion Sanders, whoever, they can tell the media there's no such thing as moral victories. But yes, this most definitely was a moral victory. Because it's now true. these have recruits in high school, they're looking at it from this perspective. Dang, if Colorado only lost by a touchdown, I might be that missing piece they need. All these offensive linemen in high school, there are these three, four, five star recruits. They're looking at this Colorado offensive line going, dang, maybe I'm the missing piece we need. Or they yeah. need. All that the makes defensive sense. linemen out there, the front seven players in high school, they're going, well, dang, this Colorado defense, if they just had some more help, they could beat a team like USC. Heck, the offense put up 41. People don't look at this Colorado team from that standpoint, though. And I'm yeah. telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you've got to change your perspective because there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Yep. I can't emphasize this enough. Just competing in this game did so much for this Colorado football program. Mm-hmm. We lost on the field, but off the field, this was a win. Coach Prime eventually will, and I don't know if it's going to happen as early as next year, but eventually, I'd like to believe he's going to get some better offensive linemen. Bro, he is. Line. That's not to throw shade or shots at the current ones, but they're just not very good. There's many more things I could say. I'm going to leave it with that. Let me know your thoughts. It's the first year, but just know, we coming.